Welcome everybody to Red G Fox. Thank you for joining us. So today we are back to our normal schedule and we are on season two in our chronological order. And before I get going, do me a favor. If you are a normal subscriber of our channel, please give this video. If you don't like the other ones or you, you kind of like some, not the others, I'm just trying to get a general feel on how many people who are subscribers are actually watching our videos. Give this video a like. And if it gets up to the 50, to the 100, whatever, that's great. I just want to know how many of our subscribers are watching and part of our community. Um, and that's it. But if you are new to our channel and you love Sanford and Son, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join our community today where you will have a lot of fun with a lot of Sanford and Son diehard fans and experts. So today we are on Potluck 7.4 IMBD. And I think that's about right. It, it is a funny episode. It's a good one. Uh, definitely when I would say in the second, the back half of favorite episodes when it comes to Sanford and Son. In this one, the summary, Lamont, he, get, he, he buys this $20 commode and now he finds out, hey, you know what he hears from someone that it could be worth a lot of money. And one guy wants to get it back, says he got ripped off. Another guy says, hey, I can give you a lot of money for it. And Fred is not too excited about any of this nonsense going on. So that is the summary on the episode. Let's get right to it right here with the fun facts. Lamont, and this is, we only got one today, and this is funny. It is weird that they do this. But in this one, Lamont gives a phone number in the show. He actually says, he's talking to someone. He's like, hey, is this, what is the actual number? He says, is this 654-1654? That is an actual cell phone number now. That is a private number. And someone has that number, so that would be great if it was an actual Sanford and Son fan who bought, fought for the rights to get that number so he can say, hey man, remember that number from Sanford and Son, the potluck? That's mine. But they usually always do the 555. We know that in all shows, 555 means it's a fake number. But Lamont uses the real one in this, and it is a private number still to this day. So that is wild that he says that. And in the show, it turns out to be a, a McDonald's. He's like, hey dad, pop, that's a, a number to a, a local McDonald's. So that is it with our fun fact. I wish we had more. I love when we find these things we didn't know about in, in an episode. Familiar faces. Right here we get Jonathan Harris. He plays Emile Bonet, Mr. Bonet. And you can recognize him right away because he's so distinguished and he always has that look. He is from Lost in Space. He is Dr. Smith. That's what he's most commonly known. The minute every time I see him, I think, hey, Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Lost in Space, not Face. 83 episodes. So, you know, the whole series. Uh, he did the voice of uh, the Praying Mantis. Uh, they called him Mantis in A Bug's Life, the Pixar movie. He was also in Toy Story 2. And I can't remember who he did in Toy Story 2. Space Academy, 15 episodes. That was another show later on uh, down the line. 50. So he had a thing with space, right? He's got Lost in Space and now Space Academy. And he was also part of the Spider-Man animated series. He did several voiceover work in that. So he did a whole list. He did a bunch of different shows. A lot of things were one-time appearance. Uh, but when it came to reoccurring, it was Lost in Space and Space Academy. And then I think the biggest, which I recognized his voice when I saw the movie the first time, was Bugs Life, Mantis. I just said, hey, that sounds like him, the guy from Lost in Space. Turns out it was. So in case you did not know that. Our next guy is Herb Voland, or Voland, depends how you want to pronounce it. He is Mr. Osborne. He's the guy who comes in and he's irate. He's like, hey, you ripped off my wife. You knew it was worth more. And Fred's all, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> he starts siding with him. But he was in Airplane, the movie Airplane, the classic comedy. Play of the Week. I don't know what that is. The Love God. MASH. Seven episodes in MASH. I could see his him being a character looking like someone who was like, a uh, captain or someone of importance the jeffersons and the love boat so it's funny the love god the love boat and then we just had our last one lost in space space academy so they do come in it's funny when you get the same kind of titles from shows but that's what that's it from her bowling that's it for our familiar faces this episode i think just has four people lamont fred uh mr bonet and mr osborne that's it in this one uh so that's it for the familiar, that's it for the fun facts. Let's get to the breakdown. So right off the bat, Fred's there and Lamont comes back in the truck. And one of the few times we get to see Lamont actually driving the truck. And Fred's like, man, you almost ran me over. And he's got a pot, He's or he's got his flowers. He's got two things of flowers. Lamont comes in, he's like, what did you do today? And he brings the things in. He's like, you're not gonna be able to grow plants in a junkyard like this. And Fred says, no, they're plastic, right? He's like, I'm, I don't have to worry about them growing. 
And he's bringing him in because he said he was told he was leaving him outside trying to get a smell of uh, a carne, a carne. He can't get it. And he says, the flower from the football game. <laughs> But in that, he says he wants to go put them in the kitchen because they're supposed to absorb what they smell, the odor in the closest by. And he says, I'd rather have them smell like pork chops. So he's taking them in and Fred Lamont's like, that's all you did today? And Fred's like, no. But the main thing was the flowers. But Lamont is more excited because he says, close your eyes. I got to show you something. And Fred's like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. So they go out there and Fred reveals or yeah, Lamont reveals what he got. And that is a commode. And when he shows it, Fred looks at it and uh, let's look at the clip real quick. Commode, you do know what a commode is, don't you? Yeah, that's a Japanese bathrobe. <laughs> I love when Fred's loving it. <laughs> he's like, yeah, this is great. He's all, what is it? But the fact that he, when he tells him it's a commode and Fred's like, yeah, I know what a commode is. That's a Japanese bathrobe. <laughs> and it's like, no, that's a uh, kimono. But then he tells him after he goes, he reveals what it is. He pulls out the pot and he goes, oh, it comes with a chamber pot. And Lamont's like, yeah, what did you think? It had a chain, you know, the pulling chain like the toilet. And they're talking about their history, how Fred didn't even have a toilet in, in the, when he was growing up. And so Lamont ends up saying, hey, this is worth a lot of money. You know what? And Fred's like, you know what? He goes around. He's like, yeah. And underneath he said, it's original this, it's original that. And Fred's like, yeah, you can see underneath where it says made in Japan. <laughs> And Lamont's like, no, this is legit, man. I took this to a, a guy and he looked at it and he said the possibility. Now, it was possibility. Doesn't mean it was. So my big question in this episode is, how did these con men do it? So this woman who goes out there and she's selling, a, you know, acting like she doesn't know what they are. And so they're selling them to several people. It takes like a big amount of work to do this. But th did they get it from this person, this uh, shop that he stopped by? Does he find out about it and he works for them and calls them? I don't know, because this is a con in the end. And I always wondered, how did they get this racket going? But he's saying, hey, you know what? I got this for 20 bucks and Fred's, let's see what Fred's reaction okay. is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Let's see. <laughs> I love the way Fred says that he's like, naturally, like, you know, obviously, because it's an ugly white woman. <laughs> but then when he starts telling him about it, when I love when the mod's like, yeah, man. You could do it, the, the king and queens, they could be having a, hosting a party, uh, royalty, and they just set the screen up and go right there. And Fred's like, are you kidding? And Lamont's like, no. He said, if you got caught short, you could run behind there, go real quick, and get back for the next course. <laughs> and then he even says, he's like, you won't even miss the conversation. And the, uh, let's hear Fred's reaction. If a guy got caught short doing a meal, he run behind that screen and zip, he'd be back out there in town for the next course. He wouldn't even miss none of the conversation. <laughs> That's so true. And Lamont's like, hey, they, you, you don't get caught up like that. Back then, they didn't care about things like they do now. So even if you think, and Fred, where he's like, to me, when it's supper time, it's supper time. And when it's doing something else time, it's doing something else time. That's a great quote from this episode. So after that, he, he Fred's not happy. He said, wait a minute. He said, we have a reputation. And you got to think. We've seen Fred in other episodes, especially later on. Remember, let's just remember the first two seasons where we're at now. Forget even in Sanford or something where, you know, you go, Fred's trying to pull a, a fast one or a swindle. With this one, I get Fred's point. He's like, look, we have a reputation of not ripping people off. And Lamont's like, what? Are you kidding me? But he's like, look, if you knew it was worth this, we shouldn't have just gave 20 bucks. And Lamont's like, no, she wanted to get rid of it. She didn't know what it was. And it's a possibility, right? It could be. We still don't know if it is. But Fred's like, it just, it just doesn't feel right. You know, you, you know, I don't want to rip people off. And then there's a knock at the door and in comes Mr. O or no, he didn't come in yet. He opens it and it's Mr. Osborne. He's like, ah, oh, yes, Mr. Sanford. He said, were you at my uh, house this morning? My wife sold something on accident. And Lamont's like, maybe it was, you know? And he goes, hey, I just buy stuff. And that's when he's pissed. He's like, you knew, you knew what it was and you were taking advantage. And he's like, I I'm just a business guy. And he's like, can I come in? He wants to talk and he comes inside and then he sees it's still there and he's excited for it. But then he starts, when they're going back and forth, he's like, okay, uh, look, I know what it is, but it's your, it's your wife's fault. You know, that's not on me. And he's like, that you are, that's terrible business. And then Fred's like, yeah, it's terrible. And then he goes, it's a, let's look at this. I love the way Fred keeps echoing him. Now that's very unfair, very unfair. That's very unfair, very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> the way he's doing, he's all, that's terrible and i love earlier before that when fred kept going i knew it i knew it and when he came in because he said i knew it this is going to be bad for our business and he's like he says i knew it i knew it multiple times then he starts agreeing with everything and then when he says cad i love that he's like you uh you're a cad fred's like 
Wait, wait, what's that? You just called my son? And you thought he was, it seems like Fred's gonna defend his son. And then when he says cad, he's like, oh, okay. And then what does Fred do? Let's see this. A cad? Yeah. You behaving like one of them. And a dummy too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a cad. And Fred agrees. So finally he says, hey, you know what? $30, $50. And Fred's like, we'll take it. We'll take it. Because rightfully so. Fred's thinking, hey, that's a profit. We get out of trouble of being kind of like shady, underhand business dealers. And then he gets all the way up to 200. He's like, you got me over a barrel, uh, 200 in Lamont's like, deal. You know, we'll do that. And he's like, not a bad profit. And he writes a check. And so when he goes to give him the check, he keeps it. And he's like, okay, put your phone number and address on the back. So he gets the check. And now the guy, and I, this is, this is always a red flag. When a person says, I'll pick it up later, you know, I'll, I'll come, I'll come give it later. And you're like, well, why didn't you just get it now? I mean, I've seen in other shows, right? And every time it's in another show from Murder, She Wrote to Andy Griffith to anything where the person goes to purchase or drop off something, they go, oh, well, I didn't have the, the insurance papers or the owner deed, or I'll pick it up and come get it later. It's always underhand. And so he's like, oh, I'll have someone come pick it up. Dude, just take it and put it in your car and go. But he doesn't because we know it's a scam. And so he sits there. And he's, and then he threatens me. He's like, Oh, I'll call the better business bureau. And the mom's like, I'm not a member. <laughs> so he leaves. And that's when Fred's like, no, you know what? This is, this is underhand. And we, we open up where they're in there and Fred's making his breakfast, right? He's giving him food. Let's look at that real quick. <laughs> It's funny the way he does that. And when he's all, this is Sanford and Son, not Shakedown and Son. And that's what it feels like. So he's sitting there and giving him, and, he, and he's letting his opinion know. And then he sits down, and that's when Lamont's like, wait a minute. He said, now I bought it for 20 and bought it back for 200 That's a 1,000% profit. And he's all, yeah. And he goes, you bought that suit for $2 and sold it for 20 to uh, the Mexican guy down the street. He said, that's a 1,000% profit. What's the difference? So you get that. Fred, I think, was never debating the percent profit or how you do it. It's Fred said, at least in my deal, everyone was happy. The, Lamont's deal, that guy's not happy. He's not happy. Only one is Lamont and the, the Mr. Osborne is not. And the fact that Fred makes a good point. Hey, he bought that $2 suit with the hopes of maybe selling it, maybe 10 bucks, right? You do a markup. We know that that's how business works. But the fact that he was able to get 20, it's not a ripoff because the guy came willing to pay it. He never had a three piece suit. And he's like, yeah, did you tell him knickers are not stuff? <laughs> Let's watch that clip. <laughs> well, niggas ain't out of style. That's why I said them. I saw a picture in the paper the other day. Hey, you know the head man in Yugoslavia? What's his name? Toto. <laughs> I love that. But Fred's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's something is worth what you'll pay. And I think that Fred does business right, at least up to this point, right? I think Fred does business right. He wants to look, get a deal, make money, but do it. Uh, even if he said, hey, I'll buy it for 50 and sell it for 100. He's not going to buy it for two, rip a lit person off, and then have the, the other person know about it, and now you make it awkward. So I, I agree with Fred more than, than Lamont on this, even though they're both doing a 1,000% profit. Now there's they go out there, and Fred's excited, at, or Lamont's excited, and there's a knock at the door. And now it's uh, Mr. Uh, Bonet, and he comes in, and he's like, oh, you know, I go over the place, and I love just him. He just feels so elegant, so classy, and when he speaks, he sometimes his jokes are funny. But when he comes in and he's telling Lamont, oh, you know, I travel all over the world. I look for different things and I look for junk. That's a load of crap. And you just happen to come to a junkyard, a, a 9114 South Central <laughs> That's a red flag, dude. Oh, man. And there's a, there's a clip of, uh, there's a clip on YouTube where you can find Jonathan Harris, the actor, talking about this time. This is a side note where he was on an episode of Sanford's Son and Red Fox invited him over his house afterwards for a party. And he, he said Red was super nice to him. They got along great. And uh, it's a it's a long story, but it's funny. And he said at the party, he looked around. He's like, he's the only man, the only non-colored, you know, person of color, uh, uh, black people. There, he's the only white guy there. And he's like, you know, where? And it, you'd have to go look it up. Go look it up. Jonathan Harris talking about Red Fox. It's a great clip. It's very funny, and it's refreshing to see that. But he liked Red a lot. He thought Red was uh, a great person. But anyway, so when he comes in and he's saying all that. He looks over and he sees, uh, he's looking in Fred's direction. He's all, what do we have here? You know, what is that? And Fred's looking at him. He's like, Fred's mad. And he's like, oh, that's just my father. <laughs> but he starts checking things out around the room. And let's look at a clip right here. Because he does get, I like the, the exchange between him and Fred where Fred's making jokes about everything. And then Mr. Bonet's reaction to it. Oh, this glass cabinet, is it period? Yeah, it's the only glass cabinet we got, period. <laughs> You have a nice sense of humor too. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It feels natural and organic. They have good chemistry there. 
But then he's trying to talk to Lamont and Fred keeps interrupting him, finishing the joke. And then finally he goes, he sees it and he says, oh, what, what is that? You know, his voice, oh my gosh. And he goes over and he sees the commode and he opens it and it's the Prince of, he's like, oh, the Prince of Wales, you know, what you have in here is worth so much and he wants it. And he says he can buy it for Sophia, Sophia Loren. Yeah, right. Yeah, she just sent you there to the junkyard here. So he's like, oh, he can get a buyer. He can get this. And it's just red flags all over. But Lamont's excited. He's like, oh, I can give you 400, 500. And Fred's like, no, no. Fred's not thinking uh, cha-ching. He's not hearing dollar signs. He's thinking reputation and you already sold it. So Fred's like, no, you can't. And he's like, oh, I can go up to 900. And Lamont's like, wait a minute. Yes, maybe we can. He said, uh, and he stops his dad. He's like, we need to go speak in the kitchen. And they do the classic Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then close the door and then they're just screaming. You can hear Lamont the loud. Lamont always gets the loudest when they get in the kitchen and he's looking at it and he's checking things out. And then they come back out. They're all calm, you know, understanding. He's like, look, I can buy it back. I can pursue him. He said it was a mistake. I can pursue him. And the guy says, okay, uh, buy it back. If you can prove you have full ownership of it, then he goes, I'll buy it. I can maybe even go over a thousand or over 900, you know, a thousand. So this sounds too good to be true. And we've seen it before with Lamont where he gets dollar signs and excitement of he can make a big payday. He wants to get out of the, this uh, life with here. Remember, we've seen that before that he wants to move on. Um, but either way, this is a big payday for him. So he's like, yeah, let's do it. And Fred is 100% not for it. He's like, no, you know, I don't like this. I don't like this deal. So he leaves and then we see Lamont on the phone. And that's when we go that he, we see that he's he uses that phone number. He's calling. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Bonet. Yeah, I just want to let him know. He's all that. Uh. I, I got it. I have established it. It's been a couple days. I haven't heard from him. Uh, I could sell it to him whenever he's ready. And that's when Fred comes walking in and he's like, you know what, Pop? He said, that number goes to a, Mac a McDonald's. <laughs> and that's when Fred knows. Fred's like, know what? You've been con, buddy. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're into this thing for uh, 300 and I think $320. And he's like, no, no, I'm not. He said, you're forgetting I have the check for 200 that earlier remember that he gave me said I got that check and I already deposit it in the bank so uh, and I'm only in and I paid an additional hundred to get it back from him so I'm only into 120 because he paid 24 originally and Fred's like uh and then he goes sit down let me tell he's all one the check is still bouncing <laughs> and he goes and two those guys uh, I already had it appraised because remember he said even if even if the guy never comes back not even the check he said I still got the commode I could sell it so I could sell for 500 600 get money and then Fred's like, the check is still bouncing. So the, he didn't get the 200. And he goes, I already had it appraised by another guy who says he's done 14 this week. And they're only worth 20 bucks for the, commo the case and 20 bucks for the chamber pot. And he goes, you got taken. So these guys somehow sold. That's why I said, I, go, I don't know how, unless collectors saw the lady or they went around. She was at, you can find a way. But in the end, these two were working together. One guy acts like that, gives you the check that's going to bounce, the other guy comes. So it's a great scam, and Fred once again shows wisdom, age is better than youth when it comes to these kind of dealings. And that's it. Lamont gets a lesson, he gets taken. That's why when you see it, there is, as we showed in some of the clips, there are funny parts. I I can watch this episode and laugh, and I, I'm not, it's not like one where I go, oh, put on another one. No, I'm good with this one. This is better, this is better than some of like the bottom 20 that I've mentioned that we've covered already. So it's an enjoyable episode. It's funny seeing uh, Fred and Lamont do these in the exchange with Fred. I really like Fred more in this one. Uh, but other than that, it's not memorable. Other than the fact that you just go, eh, it kind of sucks that Lamont gets taken on that. Because you do, in the end, you just start to see how the last few episodes, Lamont's been getting better, uh, getting along with his father, being nicer, got him out of the old folks' home. And you're like, hey, you know what? Lamont character is developing to a nicer person. And now you kind of feel bad for him because... He just got taken again. So that's what does suck in the episode to where I go, you know what? There's better ones to watch. But if this is on, this is still a, a classic one. 7.4. Like I said, it's not. We've seen 6.9, I think, in some of these outside the top seven. So that tells you it's not super bad. But then it ends. The very end, we see uh, Lamont pulling in and he's like, hey, I saw you had the sign saying commode for sale. He said, how are you going to sell it when it doesn't even have the pot? And Fred's like, no, no, man, because I, I think he's trying to get 40 for it. And he goes, how do you get it? He goes, well, I'm asking for 30, but I think I can get 40. But if it comes up to 40, I could maybe get 50. And if they even if they agree to 50, I might be able to get 60. And he goes all the way up to 80. <laughs> and the mom's like, you don't even have the pot. He's like, no, I've been polishing it. I tightened up all the screws, right, on the, the box that holds it. And he comes out, and he's got the fake flowers in the pot. And he's like, you know what? Uh, is it? Who's he saying? The Prince of Wales probably would have really appreciated this one more if he used the bathroom. It would have smelled nice afterwards. So it's got a little funny ending, a happy ending, because even Lamont smiles at the end. 
But that is it for Pot Luck. It is a funny episode. If you have not seen it, I definitely recommend it. If you haven't seen it in a while and you kind of forget it, there's still funny parts that we left on the floor. Like I said, I can't cover the whole episode, uh, but it is a good episode. Go watch it. Comment below, is it one of your top ones? I don't even like to say, oh, I don't like this that much because people say they love some of the ones that I don't like and then people don't like some of the ones that I love. So share your comments below. Where is it ranking for you? Is it a top 30? Is it a top 50? Is it kind of on the back burner for you as well? Um, and then list your favorite part if you want. So have a great week. Uh, I hope you uh, were able to see our last live show. It got The timing got messed up. Uh, you can always watch the replay and watch the episode with us as we finished up our Achu uh, week. And this week, we're coming up this week. Somewhere along the line, we're going to start our round two, another tournament. Remember, we had the best one-and-done characters in show history. We already did season one tournament, best episode. We are now going to be starting this day, the best episode of season two tournament, where each week we vote in top four, top four, to get it down. And I already know, we know there's going to be a, a lot of, you're going to have um, the, 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 dang it, the card sharps. Card Sharps is going to be up there. That that one before, uh, I've seen it in the past. That's one of the favorite. Rated X, it's going to be hard to beat Rated X. Uh, you also got uh, Guests in the Yard. Like, there's some really good ones in Season 2 that we've already gone over um, and mit and gone through. That It's it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So stay tuned for that. Get ready to vote and get ready to see us on Fridays. We break down the four episodes that are up for that tournament. So have a great week. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.